Hello and welcome to Data and AI Summit 2021. I'm Ali Gotzi, co-founder and CEO of Databricks, and I'm coming live from the lake house. And if you don't know what that means, it'll hopefully become very clear in the next couple of days. Thank you for taking time to join us. We have a fantastic event planned for you this week. In our ninth year, our second year as a virtual event, Data and AI Summit has become a truly global event for the entire data community. We have over 100,000 attendees from every industry, from over 150 countries in every corner of the world. Developers, data engineers, scientists, analysts, architects, students, and a broad range of technology leaders. A true community event where we learn from each other and share the latest innovations and move our industry forward. For those of you who have attended our event in the previous years, you've probably noticed that we changed the name of the summit. It went from Spark and AI Summit to Data AI Summit. And I want to quickly explain why we did that. We always want this to be the premier event for the entire data community, which means we need to evolve as the industry and the community evolves. Today, Spark has become the standard for large-scale data processing, and along the way, it has rapidly accelerated the whole industry. New open source technologies like Delta Lake, MLflow, Qualys, Redash, PyTorch, and TensorFlow mean that new use cases and broader data community. And this new conference name and contents is meant to reflect these shifts. As you'll see, we will continue to have deep and dedicated focus on Spark through training, content, and speakers. But we've also added a lot more to cover the full technical spectrum, from data all the way to AI. In our morning and afternoon keynote sessions, you'll hear from a dozen of the top innovators and thought leaders in the industry. This includes Matei Zaharia, the original creator of Apache Spark and MLflow. Reynold Chin, Databricks chief architect and top contributor to the Apache Spark project. Shafi Goldwasser, who got the computer science equivalent of Nobel Prize, the Turing Award. Bill Inman, who is regarded by many as the father of the data warehouse. Matt Garman from AWS, who led the creation and launch of the legendary Amazon EC2 service. DJ Patil, the former chief data scientist of all of the United States, and a number of data team leaders and organizations like Atlassian, McDonald's, SC Lauder, and JP Morgan. We also hear inspiring talks from special guests like Malala Yousafzai, the world's youngest Nobel laureate, Bill Nye, the science guy, the CEO of Planetary Society, best-selling author Michael Lewis and Charity Dean, as well as the engineering leaders behind NASA's Mars 2020 mission. They all have amazing stories to share, and we hopefully challenge us to think and see more broadly about the role that data and AI can play in the world. But in addition to hearing from all of these speakers, we also want to hear from you. Please get social and participate in the Data and AI Summit conversations. Share your thoughts and perspectives and help us make this virtual experience as interactive and as engaging as possible. Be sure to use the hashtag Data and AI Summit. I also want to take a moment to thank our sponsors. This event would not be possible without the support and partnership of these organizations. So please join me in thanking them for making Data and AI Summit happen. You can visit all of our sponsors in the Dev Hub and the Expo in the top nav of your Summit interface. From your dashboard, which you can see here, you can also access your personalized agenda, featured sessions that are playing at any given time, and all the different ways to engage with each other. And if you're a Databricks customer, be sure to visit the Databricks experience for specific content and activities that might be of interest to you. We've also created an easy way for you to support the nonprofit organizations that we're sponsoring at this year's summit. As a data community, we have a unique opportunity to help solve some of the world's toughest problems. And giving back is another important way to participate in that mission. This year, we are proud to partner with three organizations that are driving impact and change in different ways. The first is CARE.org. CARE's mission is to work around the globe to save lives, defeat poverty, and achieve social justice. Today, as COVID-19 continues to have a devastating impact on India, CARE is one of the leading organizations in the region focused on providing essential services and equipment to those who need it the most. The second organization is Technovation, whose mission is to empower the world's underrepresented young people through engineering and technology. Nobody understands the potential and impact of computer science and AI better than we do. Technovation is squarely focused on helping young people, especially girls, understand and participate in these fields, reducing the talent shortage and gender imbalance in our industry, and building a new generation of technology leaders. A third organization is the Natural Resources Defense Council which is dedicated to safeguarding our natural systems. One of the main areas that NRDC focuses on is climate change. 
driving programs and legislation that help reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and expand our use of clean and sustainable energy. You can learn more about each of these organizations and make a contribution by clicking on the Give Back box in your dashboard. But at Summit, we want your contributions to go twice as far, which is why I'm proud to share that Databricks will match all donations up to $50,000. So together, we have the opportunity to contribute up to $100,000 to these important causes. Let's work together and make it happen. Let's all contribute and participate in solving some of the world's toughest problems. Because that's fundamentally what our community is all about. If there is one thing that we all have in common, it's that we believe in the impact that data and AI can have and will have on the world. It is still very early days, but today, data and AI is transforming every major industry. In healthcare, it is redefining patient experience, diagnosing diseases before they happen, and accelerating drug discoveries. In financial services, it is preventing fraud and regulating markets. In manufacturing, it is streamlining supply chain and driving predictive maintenance. In media and entertainment, it is connecting people to experiences and keeping us engaged like never before. In retail, it is personalizing the customer experience and responding to market dynamics in real time. The list of these use cases is massive, and this is just a short list of those. This is truly just the beginning, and we can do much more together. But the other thing that we have in common is a conviction of how we can get there. A shared belief that the future is open. The vast amount of innovation in the data world comes from open source. From the smallest startups to the world's largest enterprises, open source adoption is happening faster than ever. The collective ability of the community to knock down old barriers, solve new problems, and bring different personas closer together is rapidly changing the data landscape. This is why we made the theme for this year's event, The Future is Open. And we thought it would be appropriate, as the open source communities represented in this audience today are directly driving this advancement. Collectively, these projects see over 30 million downloads a month. Apache Spark has long been the standard in data processing. MLflow is now the most widely used open source project in ML platform. Delta Lake has ushered a new standard in the data architecture of the lake house. And these are just a small sampling of open data projects that this community is working on. More than ever, the right people within an organization are able to access and work with the right data and get value from it at any given time. And the biggest opportunity for value from data today comes from AI and artificial intelligence. In 2011, Mark Andreessen said, software is eating the world. Today, it's evident that AI is going to eat all of software. For example, last year, this horrible pandemic hit, but we started working on these vaccines. And actually, behind the scenes, the vaccines, the healthcare companies leveraged Databricks behind the scenes to actually develop these drugs and the vaccines. But it's not just the pandemic. It's also traditional industries, like ABN AMRO, which is a bank leverages data and AI with Databricks to actually move into the future and be much more efficient in how it does banking. Also, logistics and transportation company like JB Hunt leverages data and AI. They've built a lake house and can now do much better logistics using AI. However, despite the allure of AI, most enterprises are still struggling to succeed with it. AI remains a 1% problem. With only a few web scale organizations like Google, Amazon, Uber, Netflix, and Facebook, that are able to achieve AI across the whole organization. Every BU uses AI at these companies. A big reason for this is that they have massive repositories of data and armies of data engineers and data scientists to throw at the problem, and they've been at it for two decades. The other 99%, they're still struggling. The hardest part of AI is the data piece, and data infrastructure is too complex and expensive to manage effectively for advanced use cases. Teams aren't well connected to collaborate. The challenge starts in the way that the data infrastructure itself is built from the ground up. The vast majority of data is flowing into a data lake today. Companies do a lot of data prep and validation so that they can serve data science and machine learning on top of these data lakes. At the same time, a huge amount of data is ETL'd to many different downstream data warehouses to do business intelligence and other use cases. We have to do that because the BI workloads are often too slow to run against the data lake directly. Depending on the workload, data also needs to be moved out of the data warehouse back to the data lake if it's been updated in the data warehouse. And increasingly, machine learning workloads are also reading and writing to the data warehouses simultaneously. The root of the problem is the inherent differences between the data lakes and the data warehouses. 
On the one hand, we have data lakes that do a great job of supporting machine learning and AI. They support all kinds of varieties of data, they have open formats, and there's a big ecosystem on top of them. But they have poor support for business intelligence, and they suffered complex data quality problems. On the other hand, we have data warehouses that are great for business intelligence applications. But they have limited support for machine learning workloads, and they are proprietary systems with only a SQL interface. Unifying these systems can be transformational in how we think about data. This is why we're such big believers in the lake house to provide one platform to unify all your data, analytics, and AI to allow members of your data team to collaborate together. By definition, a lake house is based on open standards and open source. Because without being open, it is impossible to create unification across all these different data types, all these tools and workloads. And the communities for the best open source projects to enable the lake house are in the audience today across Apache Spark, Delta Lake, MLflow, and Redash. The collective result has been really transformational for many organizations. In fact, more organizations than ever are adopting the Lakehouse architecture to achieve their data goals. We're seeing enterprises like Shell, Ford, Condé Nast, McDonald's, and Halliburton standing up Lakehouses, as well as digital natives like Samsara, Grab, Wildlife Studios, Grammarly, and Scribd. But I think one of those other important signals that the Lakehouse is the future is if how we're viewed by luminaries in the data space.